Use the water to stop the frying. Bit of water, bit of water. That water and the fat, that is what's going to emulsify to become a creamy sauce. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be recreating Jamie's Carbonara. Now this is one video that we have already reviewed. It was very popular. I got a lot of comments saying that black pepper has no spice to it whatsoever. Well today we're going to be recreating it and then I'm going to give you my opinion after the taste test. And if you do happen to enjoy this type of video, then be sure to give it a like, give it a share, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because it helps the channel out greatly. Now, let's get started. Hi guys, we're gonna make spaghetti carbonara, a classic Italian dish pasta cheese, bacon, what's not to love, right? But it's really controversial. I wanna give you what I think is the most authentic recipe. Jamie is right about that. Carbonara, among some other recipes as well, are extremely controversial. I mean, it's like really controversial on if you make it like this, if you add this, if you don't add that, how you do it like this. Although there are other recipes that are similar to carbonara that you can use cream or you have to use cream to make them. I actually have one on my channel and if you guys want to check that out, I can leave the video down below. So first up guys, you only need five ingredients. Guanciale. This is the cured cheek of pork. And as you can see, it's all about the fat. It's salted, it's got pepper, it's dried and it's aged. Of course, it's similar to smoked bacon and you can get some pretty good results actually. But you can see this is quite lean. So try and get them to not cut off the fat because you need it. Or there's pancetta. Last week when I started looking for ingredients to make this, luckily I actually found a place here in Barcelona that makes their own guanciale. So it's not from Italy, it's from here, but it is relatively cheap and easy to get. But I do have to admit that the guanciale has a little bit of a different flavor and taste to it, especially if you're going to be using bacon. So if you prefer bacon or if you can't find the guanciale, well, then you have to make do with what you have at home. Speaking about controversy, guys, let me know down below how you make your carbonara at home. What do you make it with? Do you make it with cream? Do you make it with garlic? Let me know. Then most people use Parmesan, but actually, the more classic is pecorino romano. Sheep's cheese, it's crumbly, it's salty. If you can get pecorino, then try to get it. But of course, if it does like break the piggy bank and it's not worth it, again, you have to make do with what you can get or with what you have in the house. Free range organic egg, pasta, black pepper, and then optional garlic. Today we're going to be trying to recreate this as closely as possible to how Jamie is making it in this video, even including the same type of spaghetti and size. And this actual brand of pasta, they sell it here, but not every store carries it. So I had to make a little special run to the grocery store to try to pick this up. And it's not cheap, yeah? This pasta is actually one of the more expensive ones. First up guys, grab the pasta by two hands, twist it, into the water. By twisting it, it won't stick together. Put a tiny amount of salt in this water because the cheese and the guanciale is salty. This beautiful pasta takes eight minutes to cook. Right, so we're gonna follow this recipe to the T and we're going to get a pot of water on. We're going to take our little spaghetti, twist it and drop it in the pot with a pinch of salt. So I've got my guanciale. I'm gonna remove the skin and I'm gonna take a nice centimeter slice of the guanciale, roughly chop this to about half centimeter chunks. Ours does not have a skin on it, so we don't have to take it off. It does have a lot of fat though. This is a very fatty piece of meat. We're gonna do the same as Jamie by cutting ours to about a one centimeter size slice. I'm going to slice these lengthways as well. And well, we'll give them a couple chops as well like Jamie's doing, but I'm going to cut them or leave them a little bigger than Jamie is in his video. And I'm doing this because it gives me more time, more flexibility while cooking this, also while making the video that they don't reduce down to nothing and then I don't have little pebbles in the pan, which can happen. Now, the pan is cold. Turn it on to a medium high heat. The reason I want it cold is because I want to render the fat out. The guanciale goes in to the pan and this pan is getting hot. Right, my turn. We're gonna be doing the same as Jamie by putting the guanciale into a cold pan and turning up the heat, bringing it up slowly. And we're also using the same type of pan that he's using. Give the garlic a crack and then put it in the pan. As this starts to sizzle, the fat will just pull out some of that perfume from the garlic. 
Now this is one of those moments that people either agree or completely disagree with adding the ingredient. We're not gonna be adding a lot of garlic, it's just one clove, and at the end we're also gonna be removing it, so we're not necessarily adding the garlic, just a bit of the oils as it's cooking. Then there's the black pepper. Get your peppercorns in a pestle and mortar, crack it, get a little sieve, this is one of the most important little bits, and no one really does it, okay? Honestly, this is the outer skin. This is much milder. What we have here is the inside part, the peppercorn, which is hotter, perfect for a good, hot carbonara. Now, like I said, originally with this video, this is a very good little technique that we do in the kitchen, because you don't want any large peppercorns in anything when you eat pasta or anything else. And it's just, you put a whole piece of black peppercorn in your mouth and it's not fun. Now, even though that Jamie is adding the black pepper to the pan early, if you don't want to do that, you can actually toast the pepper first in a dry pan until they become a little fragrant, let them cool. And today, since we don't have a pestle and mortar, we're going to be adding this to our little pepper mill. And we're going to be grinding the amount that we see on the plate, which is a little more, I think, than actually a teaspoon. So after about a minute of crack, 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 we're going to sieve it a little bit because even now we can collect some particles that are going to be a little too big and we don't want that. And we're gonna be adding this to the pan, just like Jamie, and cooking this over medium high heat. And to be honest, right now, this looks like a lot of black pepper. Now let's get onto the eggs. Eggs are really, really delicate. And if you don't treat these right, you end up with stir-fried noodles, and we don't want that. I'm gonna take a bowl, and I'm gonna crack the egg straight into there. And I'm just gonna add a little pecorino to that. So like 20 grams. Now we're time sensitive, so we're gonna have a little whisk up. As Jamie's doing, we do as well. We have our little bowl. We're gonna crack an egg into the bowl, the whole egg. Some people only say egg yolks. If you use the whole egg, it does give it a little more volume, but it can make the sauce more watery. We're also gonna be adding about 20 grams of pecorino as well, a little whiskey whiskey. And I'm gonna leave this in the fridge because today it is way too hot to be leaving food or eggs out. We've got dark guanciale. We've got the fat that's come out of it. And that's what you want. You want attitude and color. Now I'm gonna remove that garlic. And one quick thing, it is never a good idea to mix any ingredients in a nonstick pan with metal tongs. Obviously, it depends on the company and how they're made, but it's just a general good idea not to do it. If you have any plastic tongs or at least any wooden spoons, I would suggest using those instead. Turn the heat off. And we're gonna drag the pasta and the water into the pan. Use the water to stop the frying. Bit of water, bit of water. That water and the fat that is what's gonna emulsify to become a creamy sauce. Funny thing, even the recipe on his website says explicitly to add a splash of water. So, should we do splashy splashy? Uh, why not, I have to clean up anyway. No, actually on second thought, we're gonna use the ladle instead. We're not frying anymore, can you hear that? Quiet, no frying at all. Only then can we think about adding our egg. As we toss, we add some more liquid. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the cream. You get the cream through the emulsification of the cooking water and the fat and technique and timing. So as simple as this is, it's technical. This is the most critical moment. You do not want your pan to be too hot. So it is a good idea to turn off the heat, like Jamie said. Add a little bit of the water as well, if need be, to cool it down. We're gonna add our eggs in like Jamie give the pasta a couple tosses. You know, the higher that you put your hand when you're tossing the pasta, the easier it is to toss it. I'm being facetious, but you don't necessarily need, unless of course you like to, to put your hand so high up in the air while giving the pasta a toss that you look like a cowboy on the back of a bronco or back of a bull. If you like to do it, that's fine, but um, yeah. <laughs> get your friends, your family, get them around the table, glass of wine. Look at that guys, look at that. Carbonara! And you finish with more pepper. Wow! I'm so excited. Spaghetti carbonara with a beautiful little finishing of pecorino. Well, you know, while making this, I made a bit of a mistake and well, cooked the pasta for a little too long. But the residual heat in the pan, as well with a little bit of the pasta water, should help to emulsify the sauce. Just be careful not to add too much pasta water to the sauce, otherwise it will be a little loose or the sauce will be a little runny 
and if you like this that's fine but if you want a more creamy sauce try not to now we are going to use our tongues to plate this carefully so we don't scratch the non-stick pan we're going to add a little more black pepper to it and a little more cheese that is as classic as i can give you guys from chefs from nonnas it's about quality ingredients the guanciale the pecorino romana quality eggs the pepper the technique of the pepper good pasta and then the sensitivity of cooking it right come on the first time that we reviewed this video when he said nonnas i didn't get it because i don't speak italian and the accent to be honest yeah it's not very clear and it sounded like he put a little bit of an r on the end of the word so for me i didn't understand that it meant grandma there's a little platter for two people and of course the most important thing when you eat pasta is don't watch it eat it Mm. That, my friends, is a thing of joy. It's a little hot to be cooking right now. We're in like the mid 30s in Barcelona. But anyway, let's see how Jamie's carbonara tastes. Hmm. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Well, first up, I want to say we try to follow Jamie's recipe exactly how we made it with the video, even with the splashing, but the splashing is a little ridiculous. So I didn't add that much. Well, I added maybe a little bit more water than he did in the video because I used the ladle and maybe a little too much because the sauce is a little on the thin side. It's a little too wet. It's a little too much water. I also cut the guanciale a little bigger, but overall, I have to say it's an easy recipe to make for anybody at home. First off, this is a fine recipe. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to be super, super, super picky and technical about it, okay, then you can find a few issues or things that you need to, say, improve on. One, obviously, cutting the guanciale that small that he did in the video, you don't need to cut them that small because when the fat will render, they're going to be like little pebbles. So if you cut them just a little bigger and like we did today, it'll be a little better. And even then, you can still overcook it. So you just need to keep an eye on it. Now the pepper, this is something that I said originally in the video and I still have the taste of pepper in my mouth. This is spicy. If you freshly crack the black pepper, it will be spicy. If you can't taste it, then it could be that your black pepper is pretty old because after a while, it will lose its spiciness. The garlic is not that strong. For me, the strongest flavor, honestly, is the black pepper and the guanciale. Those are the two strongest. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this new little type of reaction cooking review video. And if you did like it, then let me know in the comments and be sure to give it a like, share, and don't forget to subscribe because if you do like it, then we will make more of these. In any case, if you do have any other suggestions, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below as well. Be sure to check out this next video coming up here. Don't forget to check out our original review of this carbonara video and tell me what you guys think. Until next time, take care.